Welcome to Dr. Lottie Science with Soul, the podcast that transcends the boundaries between science and spirituality. Prepare to be uplifted, transformed, and awakened to create a path to healing your own life physically, emotionally, and spiritually by bridging the gap between science and soul. Welcome back to Dr. Lottie Science with Soul. Today, I am really excited to introduce a very special guest, and her name is Andrea Corey. Andrea Corey is an award-winning entrepreneur, author, lecturer, and recipient of McGill University Dobson Fellow for her mentorship work with budding entrepreneurs. This work continues today. In 1991, at the age of 31, Andrea experienced an out-of-body, near-death experience that changed her understanding of time, death, and what consciousness is. It also showed her how we are known and so loved by spirit. This experience also brought along psychic gifts that she has been developing and exploring for the last 30 years. Andrea's first book, Conversations with Chloe, a mother and daughter dialogue across the veil, is an actual five-month-long dialogue that began six weeks after her daughter Chloe's death. The first words Chloe said were, Mom, you are so easy to find. It's a joke. A dedicated sound meditation facilitator, Andrea offers sound live and via Zoom to help promote transcendence, healing, and inner peace. To learn more about Andrea, please visit her website, andreacorey.com. I am so excited because on Andrea Corey, and I can't wait for her to share her journey with you all. She has had an amazing journey uh, through life with so many things happening and how she became the person she is and wrote the books that she did. So we're going to, I'm going to start by asking her about her near death experience um, and she had an out of body near death experience back in 1991. So take it away and and tell us what happened. And I know you also had premonitions about it. So please share your whole story. Thank you. Okay, I will. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, it's an experience that I never get tired of sharing. And yet, I didn't speak about it for 25 years. I didn't tell a soul. I didn't even know that there was an organization that I could go to to discuss my near-death experience and to meet other people who had similar experiences. So um, I love to share it because it's uh, it just shows so much about what's really going on. And yes, initially, um, the experience was shown to me, the whole accident that I was going to have in the evening was shown to me that morning. So as I woke up that morning, I had a vision and it wasn't a dream because I remembered every detail. And in this vision, I saw my husband and I, I saw us walking down a sidewalk, big snowstorm. I saw a car. I even saw the make and the color of the car. And I heard him scream as this car hit us. And I remember thinking, how do you get hit by a car when you're walking on a sidewalk? And then I got up, I started my day and I forgot about the vision because it was actually the day we were having the funeral for my grandmother. So it was a big day. And uh, we were out that evening. We leave early, it's 10 past 10. And I say to my husband, I'm exhausted, let's go home. And the divine timing of it was so beautiful. We walk out of this house down this long staircase out to the sidewalk. There's no room really because all the cars are parked. There's one little, little entrance. And sure enough, as we're walking down the sidewalk, we get hit. We get hit from behind. And although we never saw it coming, I was prepared. I knew that this was happening for a reason. So I decided not to panic and go crazy as I was flying through the air and um, flew down the street, hit the road and came out of my body. And that for me was the first time I had ever experienced my consciousness. And, you know, I listened to your, 
near-death experience and you're saying like you were still completely you and this was such an incredible revelation how could i be me with all my memories all my feelings all my emotions and yet i was looking down at this thing on the road that was completely immobile and i recognized the coat because i had this fabulous red coat and i said wait a minute that looks like my coat and sure enough it was and then there was a big gathering at the house that we had just left and i looked up at the house and the door is opening and everybody's screaming and all these people are piling out into the snowstorm and i'm looking at all these women and none of them have a coat on and i'm thinking like why aren't you putting a coat on and i'm trying to tell people to go back inside and put their winter coats it was a december night in montreal and nobody could hear me i tried to talk to my husband he couldn't hear me that woman that poor woman who was driving the car you know to this day i have never met her i have never talked to her i have never told her I am okay. In fact, I am better than okay. And I felt so badly of all the guilt she must have carried, you know, with her all these years. So this whole scene of chaos is going on and the ambulances are there and everybody's screaming and I just move away. It just all of a sudden has no more attraction, no more emotional attachment. And I just leave it and I have no pain and I'm just surrounded and yes it's that magnificent cocoon of love and light and I just see the whole scene getting smaller and smaller and smaller and next thing you know I have this image in front of me could have been male or female it was a sort of a body image but very tall like maybe nine feet and he addressed me by name this was the part that always gets me because I was like, oh, you know my name? You know, I thought, who am I that you should know my name? You know, little old me. And he said, Andrea, do you want to stay or do you want to go? And uh, I had three young children at the time, a one, a three and a five year old. So I said, I have to go back. And he asked me again. And I said, even if every bone is broken, I must go back. And I was thrown into a vortex. I didn't even know the word at that point, but that's what it was. It was this massive whirling thing of black light. And it was just this crazy thing. And I remember saying, wait a minute, I don't have any arms and any legs. How come I have hands that I can push against the edge of this thing? But I I did. I mean, I had my astral body and I was holding on for dear life. And I knew I had to hold on. Otherwise, I was going to get thrown. I didn't know where. And it went and it went and I went and I slammed back into my body. And I woke up. And uh, as they were putting us into the ambulance, I knew that my life would never be the same. I said, something has gone to a lot of trouble to warn me and to save me and I'm going to make my life count and my first dishes my first decision I made it right there right there in that ambulance I said I am not going to live a life without love and I remember I had this thing on my neck and I looked over at my husband he was in right I said okay this is over <laughs> and it was it was over but it's actually the fun was only beginning and it was not easy because, yes, I ended up being a single mom with three little children. But that night, something incredible happened. And I didn't understand it for many years. But I received the spirit of my grandmother in me. Uh, it's called a walk-in. And sometimes the walk-ins are your relatives. Sometimes it's not. Um, but my grandmother decided that she had unfinished business and that we were going to accomplish some things together. And so she started talking to me and I could hear her clear as day telling me, go do this, go do that, read this book. We're going to learn about patience. She would quote um, 
passages even out of the Bible to me. And I would write them down. And I only found out afterwards, oh yeah, Andrea, that's from the Bible. I'm like, really? I didn't know the Bible, you know? But um, yeah, so December 1991, I was 31 years old. And that's really when my life started over. So uh, did you break a lot of bones? How did, your, uh, how did you both you know come what? out? I had a run in my pantyhose. I did not break one bone. That car was destroyed. The car was completely totaled. I didn't break one bone, but I was black and blue. My whole body was black and blue. It took me a year to recover. And, uh, I, and I, I did a lot of physio and I still do yoga three times a week. I still have to be careful. Even 30 years later, I still have to be careful. But one of the beautiful things was my one-year-old, there was no way I could pick him up. I couldn't hold him. I couldn't hold him. I couldn't walk up and down the stairs with my kids. So I put him in a bundle buggy, which is one of these little wrap around things that you wear on the front. Mm -hmm. And he loved it. And he refused ever. He never got in a stroller. He always just wanted to be in the bundle buggy. And today he's 33 and he still loves to snug <laughs> and he still loves to hug and he still loves to, to be close. Yeah. Yeah. And, and your husband, how did he, how did he fare? He actually didn't break a bone either. Uh, but uh, I don't think he did the physio and all the other things that I did. So he ended up with a lot more issues to handle. But the cool part was my grandmother knew before I knew that so many other things in my life were going to fall apart, especially my financial situation because at some point he declared bankruptcy and uh, stopped paying all child support. And I was sort of thrown into chaos. Uh, and my grandmother said to me, this is my grandmother in spirit. So you don't argue when your grandmother says, she said to me, you're going to go into this room, look on the bottom shelf, go get that picture, make a logo and we're going into business. And that's exactly what we did. Yeah. And so how did it all start? How did you start hearing your grandmother? Did that happen right when you were in the it hospital happened, or a year later? It happened later? right away. No, it happened right after the near-death experience. And I didn't realize at first that it was, that she was so with me, but I started having her mannerisms and I started having her really bad table manners because she had lived alone for many years. <laughs> right. Sorry, grandma. And she would eat really bad and her mouth was always open and all these different things. And I started doing the same thing. And that's when I realized, oh my God, what is going on here? Yeah, yeah. So what, ha so what happens then with the walk-in? Do you still have your soul, but then a fraction of her soul is, is with you? Or how does that work? You, you know, know? I, all I can tell you, what I know is what I lived was that I could hear her in my head like she was with me, but I was still there. She stayed for about um, about seven years, seven, eight years. And then one day I was having a little bit of surgery and I was put under a general anesthetic. And when I woke up, she was there and she said, okay, I'm leaving now. Now I can go. And I said, oh, no, I, then I really grieved. I was like, no, no, don't go. And I asked her, I said, where are you going? And she said, I'm going to the Omega. And I didn't know what that was. And then I found out that the Omega was the end. I'm going to the Omega. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so many amazing things happened because, I mean, just one, just one little example. My grandmother's estate was completely finished. And there were, you know, many children and many grandchildren. And my divorce was also done at the same time. My mother calls me up and says, I have a check for you. Something tells me I should give you this money. Now, my divorce at that time, it was a very simple thing. My divorce cost me like $1,109. That was it. And my mother gives me a check. And it's like three, four dollars over that. It's exactly the amount I needed for my divorce. And that meant so much to me because, you know, when you break up a family and you have three little children, there's 
even though you know this marriage is not good, not good for him, not good for me, you feel guilty. And to receive that money was like a confirmation. No, Andrea, you're doing the right thing. Yeah. So I love it. Uh, it's like the divine universe that we live in. It's just, it, you know, it's just appears when you need it. And it, it just it's appears. so divinely scripted. It's true. It's true. And it goes on and on of how we started a business together. Mm -hmm. And that too was this whole divine intervention. But I still had to work really hard. Mm -hmm. Nothing was given. But the key was that when I heard her speak to me, I didn't doubt. I didn't doubt. And, you know, if you fast forward many years, I was able to really um, walk the talk because after the near death experience, as many other people also will attest, you really have no more fear of death. There's just, it doesn't, you just know, you just keep going. You just know that your consciousness is so much more than this body. You just know that this whole thing is like one big play. But in 2015, so we're, we're moving fast forward, and this amazing business that my grandmother and I started, and that she helped me, she really helped me, Lottie. Like Friday afternoons, all the staff would leave, and her and I would walk around the whole plant. I started this business just at home. It was a food business. I ended up in, in this big plant and shipping across the country and all this stuff. But she would walk around with me and say, okay, you did this right, you did this wrong. You got to move this. This looks good. This is, oh, you really messed up when you went to visit that chef at lunch. You should never go see a chef at lunchtime. And then she would go on and on. And <laughs> he was like a real taskmaster, you know? So fast forward, mm -hmm. 2015. So I've had the business 18 years and I sell. I sell my business. I am finally free. I can't tell you, I would work even at night while I was asleep. Like oh, I, it I was bet. hard. I mm -hmm. had to bootstrap this business. No bank gave me any money. It was like, you know, everything that I would buy was because I saved and what a tough road. Mm -hmm. I'm free. I put a knapsack on my back and I go to Italy. Of course, right? It's like, I can finally be a kid. Like I can right. finally have fun. Yeah. And I'm away for one month and I get a call that my daughter is sick and I have to come back home to take care of her. And I thought, wow, divine timing. Because if I had been still working, I would never have had the time that I could just take care of her 24 hours yeah. a day. So I came home. I had one month and I came home and I spent about 10 months with my daughter, Chloe, as she went through cancer journey. And she passed in February of 2016. Now, the signs, the things, the way that Chloe has communicated with me from the first day, from the first night, from the night of her passing has been so incredible that I just cannot doubt anything. I'll just give you one example. I decided to ask a medium for, for just sort of like for the anniversary of her passing, I wanted to just talk to Chloe direct, even though we talk all the time and we wrote this amazing book together and all this. So I had a wonderful hour with this medium. And at the end of the interview, she says, oh, and Chloe wants to thank. And she starts naming different names of different women. And you know, when you sit with a medium, you should always have a pen and paper because you're not going to remember anything or you should record it or whatever. Yeah. So I wrote this all down. I didn't know who these women were. I said, thank you very much. The next day, Elizabeth from Helping Parents Heal contacts me and says, Andrea, I know the anniversary of Chloe's passing is coming. Would you like to write something in our newsletter? Because she knows I'm a writer. I said, yeah, I'd love to write something. So I write an article and I send it off to Elizabeth. And a couple days later, I look on Facebook. Sure enough, there's the article posted. And then I look at the comments. Comments from the women saying, what a beautiful article. And all the names that Chloe had given me a few days before are the names of the women who have made comments about the article. How crazy is that? 
I got the names before I had even written the article. And it goes yeah. on. One time I picked up my phone and it said, Chloe is fine. I'm like, what? Chloe is fine. Last year, um, I do sound healing and actually Chloe pushed me. She's the one who said, mom, you got to help raise people's vibrations because that's the key to communicating with spirit is to have that high vibration and to stay high. That means in everything, that means the way you think, what you do, your food, the air you breathe. I mean, it's a whole lifestyle, really. It's a total shift to being in a more high vibrational state. So last year, we are in Phoenix at the conference for Helping Parents Heal. And I am doing something called the Sound Lounge, which is in the room with all the photos of our beautiful children in spirit. So it's over 900 kids. It's the most beautiful PowerPoint. Like it just was outstanding. So I get in there and their hardware breaks down. So I say, okay, no problem. I'll put your PowerPoint on my computer. I'm going to be in here anyway for the whole time. I go in the next morning and everything is going haywire. Nothing really wants to work. Nothing is working properly. It was working and now nothing's working. And all of a sudden I'm trying to figure things out and I look up at the screen and whose picture out of over 900 kids is up on the screen? Miss Chloe. And I look up there and I see her picture and I said, Chloe, how did you do that? And you know what her answer was? Mom, you make it so easy. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, you don't doubt. And I said, that's it. That's my mission. My mission is to help other people release their doubt. Because that's really when the magic starts to happen. When you don't doubt anymore. That is so true. That's very true about any kind of mediumship, right? You have to um, tune in and, and, and go for it. It's yeah. whenever you have the doubt, it's you lose the connections. You lose the connection. Mm -hmm. That's right. I was at Arthur Findlay. I have this here. This is, this is crazy. I was there in, um, I was there at the end of 2016 and we were doing these one-on-one -on -one fantastic, you know, exercises to boost our mediumship. And I'm sitting across from this young man and he's doing a reading for me. And he says, you are going to find a piece of carved wood. He said, and it's just going to blow you away. This piece of carved wood, you are not going to forget it. It's going to be the most amazing sign. And I had no idea what this man was talking about. And about four years later, so my lovely Chloe has been gone about four years. Look what shows up on my dresser. It showed up on my dresser and this was Chloe's wow. and it's wood and it's carved. She had long hair and she used to roll it around and mm -hmm. stick it in her hair in it. And it showed up. And the minute it showed up, I said, Oh, that's what he was talking about. But it took like four years <laughs> for this thing to show up. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I love yeah. it. I love how they love also it. sometimes you get the messages and you think it's going to be within the next month and then literally it's years later it's happened years. to me too i i hear you or if, yeah. about events that are about to happen um yeah. did yeah. your did your husband also have any near death experience or just you um you know what i he didn't lose consciousness so he stayed conscious um and i never told him even to this day he doesn't even know that i had a near death experience um I never discussed it with him and uh, I really, I don't know. I don't know. My life totally moved on and uh, because I had no more financial assistance, I was really on my own, mm -hmm. which was in a way, not in a way, it was a huge blessing because then I was able to be the master of my own life and my own destiny. And I would never have been there if it wasn't for my grandmother pushing me. Yeah. So, yeah. So it, did you have, did, did your personality change a lot? Is that what caused the divorce or would the divorce have happened anyway? You know how people have near death experiences and there's a really high divorce rate, like I don't know, 75 or 80% or something within the first yeah. seven years. 
So was it because you had the NDE, you, know you think? Or? I think I was a coward. I think I was weak. I think that I should have done it much earlier. But to me, it's marriage. And marriage is till death do us part. And I said, wait a minute. I died. Okay, I'm out of here. Like for me, that was justification. And that was it. But uh, it's funny because Chloe and I wrote a book together after she passed. And she says, to, she chastises me in the book. She's like, mom, why did you have to go through that to decide that you deserved a life of love, you know? And I said, you're right, Chloe, but it's not that simple. And when you have three children and you, you know, you have a family, you don't want to break it up. Um, but that's what it took for me. That's what it took. Yeah. And then um, how did the book come about with Chloe? Did she just start talking to you or what happened yeah yeah well this is the book it's called conversations with chloe and that's my lovely chloe there and she's funny because she gives me a hard time she says mom you know you wrote your name at the bottom but my name should be there too and she's right actually she is because it's really co-written mm -hmm. so after chloe passed no before chloe passed i knew that I needed to go somewhere just to heal. I wanted a little spot and I went on Airbnb and I found this little cottage by the water. It was a little 400 square foot thing and it was just feet from the water. And I said, perfect, I'll go there for a month just to decompress and then, you know, get back on my feet slowly. So I'm in this little cottage and I've only been in there for maybe, I don't know, a week. And I start writing her letter and I say, Chloe, you would love this place. It's a tiny little thing, you know, two cups, two glasses, two dishes. It's like Noah's Ark of perfection. And it's so simple. And I get up with my letter and I'm going to burn it in my little wood stove. And I hear her in my head say, mom, don't burn that letter. Mom, go get your computer, sit down and we are going to write together. And what happened was she would wake me up at about four o'clock in the morning and she and she would physically like push on my shoulder so i would feel a physical push and i would wake up and i would open this little laptop that i have and i would write my words and then i would wait for her to respond and i would close my eyes that was the beauty of it when she was speaking i could close my eyes i could type and i never made a spelling mistake is that cool or what? That was the coolest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, to me, that's like cooler than anything. Never made a mistake. And she said to me, you are not allowed to edit my words. I'm like, what? You want to write a book together, but I can't edit your words? I said, then they better be perfect. You know, they better be perfect. And you know what, Lottie? They were. They were perfect. And uh, the book just flowed. It was a five month long conversation. And there's so much beautiful information in there about life on the other side. And I always give the book to anybody who wants a PDF version, I send it to anybody. And if somebody wants to buy a soft cover, I sell them the soft cover. And it's just a really fantastic book for people, especially who've lost somebody. It gives so much hope. It really does. Yeah. So, you know, oh, there's one thing I wanted to mention. That day when I was writing that letter and I got up to put it in the wood stove and I heard Chloe said, Mom, don't burn that letter. You know what else she said? She said, Mom, you're so easy to find. It's a joke. And I said, what do you mean, Chloe? And she said, you pray, Mom. And when you pray, your light goes out. She said, we see your light. We, it's like this thing shoots out from you. I'm like, really? She's like, yeah. I mean, like prayer is like really a thing you really see? She's like, yeah. I didn't know that. There's so many things I didn't know. So many things I didn't know. You know another thing she told me? She said, mom, if you only knew how close we are. She said, you'd be bumping into us all the time. Like, it's just amazing. The two worlds are so, so close. So close. Yeah. 
you know, I feel like they're right. They're really right next to us. They're right next to us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then how long are you still have connection with Chloe? Is that still happening that you have conversations? Well, you know, it's interesting because when I started talking to Chloe, even though my grandmother had been long gone, she would still come back and talk to me. And this time she came back, she said, okay, you're not going to hear from me for a good long while because I don't want you to get mixed up. I want you to know that clearly it's Chloe that you're with. And then at the end of this book, which took five months to write, then Chloe said, okay, mom. She said, she explained something to me because I asked her, I said, like, where are you exactly? How come I hear you so perfectly? You know? So she explained it to me like this. She said, mom, this is the universe. Let's say this is the whole universe. And she said, you're right here. She said, I'm right here. But as soon as I finish, she said, I'm gone. So I will then move away and melt more into my oversoul. And we will still communicate, but it won't be quite the same. So I do still hear from her, but it isn't the same, not as much, you know, but I still get like um, advice for her brothers and different things. And um, when I ask, she comes, when I ask. So Chloe was a, a painter, not a very good painter. And when she passed, I had all these little paintings mm -hmm. and I decided to keep only one. And I kept this one. I kept this one because I just loved the pink mm. and it just sort of was this softness. And then at the very bottom, there was this one little black mark. And I said, that's the cancer. That was that. Yeah. But this is Chloe, but this was the illness. And so she came to me one day and she said, mom, when you need when you really need me, when it's like, you know, break the glass and you're on the floor and you just can't take it anymore, grieving, put your finger, she said, just call me, just call me and put your finger on the black dot. And it's like direct telephone. I will come right away. So one day, and you know, it's all about the purity of your intention and your thoughts, because that boy, is that ever something I learned? Everything is known. Nothing is secret everything is known so we have to operate from the utmost integrity all the time because everything is known so i never touched that black dot i didn't want to just kind of make a joke of it or abuse the privilege but one day i needed it and so i put my finger on it and i tell you she tackled me so much i fell onto the couch it's like this this weight came and tackled me and I remember that tackle from the night she passed because I was in the hospital, but I wasn't in her room. I was in a chair in the waiting room, like sitting there with my coat and my purse and everything and sleeping in this chair. And all of a sudden I was tackled and I was woken up and there was this magnificent tsunami of joy. And it was like, mom, I'm free. And sure enough, she was free. So twice, she tackled me, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I went through the grief, but there's so much joy in knowing, you know, like I asked her, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? She said, mom, I'm doing the stuff I love the most. So I loved flowers and I loved flower essences. And I, I, you know, she was a real flower child. So she's, she's, she told me she's in the lab coming up with new color combinations for flowers, for new flowers. Oh my God. She said, everything that's there starts here. So they're, they're working on, yeah. I love it. So they're really busy on the other side. Oh yeah. If they want to be, if they want to be, yeah. This other young man came to me once and I knew him when he was alive and he had cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. And he passed of cystic fibrosis. And he came to me and he said, Andrea, I want you to tell my mother, I'm a doctor. And guess what I'm working on? I'm working on cystic fibrosis. And that's why I had to come and I had to live it and experience it. So that now on the other side with our team, we're going to come up with a cure. 
nor going to come up because it was like not treatable. And just a few years ago, they came up with a drug and it's called CAFTA. I can't forget that name because um, I just knew when I saw this article, I said, oh my God, they've done it. And it was a drug to really help people with cystic fibrosis lead normal lives. And I'm like, wow, you did it. So they keep, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. They keep working on the things they love mm -hmm. to work on. Yeah. Yeah. So they're really busy on the other side. What advice do you have to the listeners that may have lost a loved one or lost a child? How, do they, say, how do they overcome that grief? Do you have any oh, yeah. It's a journey. reading your book. Well, the book is really, it helps a lot. And it's a journey. And sometimes grief is really sneaky. Like you can be driving, going to one place, and then you find you're in a completely different place and you've taken a bridge and you've gone who knows where. Like grief can do crazy things to you. But you got to cry and just live it and go through it. But you can't hear them when you're in deep grief. Mm -hmm. You can't hear them when your emotions are in turmoil. So once that period has been sort of you've moved through it a bit, then you can begin to believe and not doubt and just do there's so many exercises and things you can do to you know raise your awareness raise your vibration communicate with your loved one i have a special bench that i always go to and i always tell her chloe we're going to meet on that bench and especially the death date and the birth date you know another thing about dates and all of the incredible beautiful synchronicities i rented the little cottage that i lived in after Chloe passed, I rented it before she passed, a month before. She passed on February 18th, which is 218. And that's the address, 218. That's the place I rented was 218. And um, yeah. yeah, so fine. there's so there's so much. I mean, I would say keep a paper and a pencil mm -hmm. with you all the time. Yeah, because they're always trying to reach you. And just the key, don't doubt. Just throw that out the window just for a little bit of time. Just forget about doubt and see what comes. See what comes. Yeah. So much magic comes when you don't doubt. Yeah, and you wrote another book too. I did because yeah. I was sitting with a group of mothers mm -hmm. and they were all mothers who had children in spirit and they were talking about the most amazing signs they received. So I said, do you mind if I just record this? And, and sure enough, and everybody was thrilled. That's one thing I did learn is we love to talk about our children in spirit. Like, mm -hmm. Ask us questions. Never stop talking about them. Uh, we want to keep their memories alive, always. And these moms were no different. So I pressed record. And after a few weeks, there was so much great material that I turned it into a book. Yeah, it's called Magical Thinking not because one of the women uh one of the moms was assessed by a psychologist and she had said gee you know i hear my children in spirit i feel them with me i know they're guiding me and so of course the psychologist said well you know she is prone to magical thinking but your psychosis doesn't seem too bad so you know maybe we don't need to up her meds and no it's not magical thinking and maybe, you know, science and spirituality is at the point now where we're meeting and uh, it's one and the same, right? So that's, that's why I titled the second book, Magical Thinking Not. Yeah, that's so, I mean, it's so important. Um, such good advice too for people uh, because you think, you know, in the beginning, I, I know what I went through, even though I had the experience, it took a long time for me to to trust in the messages I was receiving, even though I was the experiencer, it still took me a long time. So I can understand if you haven't had an out of body experience or been to the other side, it was yeah. still hard to come to terms with the divine, um, the divinity and the, the magical world that we really live in and how 
connected we are to everybody oh. in spirit. Um, I, you know, we are, we are under the illusion of being separate, but we are so connected to them. And all we really have to do is just open that door and, and tune in. Like you said, we just have to tune in. They're right around us. Yeah. And, and ask, just start hearing ask. them. You know, one thing I advise people is start a meditation group. Start your own group with three, four people that you trust and sit. Even if you just sit once every two weeks, just sit together. And as you do that, and then bring in some kind of sound instrument, something to raise the vibration. And wow, things will begin to happen and you'll begin to open up and your heart's going to open up. And then your inner world is going to open up. And that is really mind blowing for people. Yeah, I do sound now. And sometimes I, I'm with groups of, of people who have never done sound before. They don't even know what this is. And I bring in these crystal bowls and all this stuff. And they're like, what is she going to do? And I just say, look, all you have to do is what you're going to do anyway, which is breathe. That's it. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. And as the vibrations begin to do their work, people have incredible experiences. Women have visits from their husbands who've been dead for 30 years and all of a sudden he's there in front of them and he's talking and so she's crying and oh, it's really like it's so cool and parents too have beautiful after death communications with their kids um, i love doing that that's yes. that's my favorite thing of it yeah and you offer free uh sound meditations right how can people connect right. with you and learn more about that's that right. yes yes i do i have uh, uh i have on my website which is andreacoury.com, there's a calendar. And if you click on calendar, you can see all the Zoom sound sessions I have, and you can get the links. I also do live, all kinds of different live retreats and workshops, and yeah, I'm busy doing sound. But everybody is welcome. Um, a good pair of headphones is, is a good asset. And yeah, come and join us for sound. That's, that's wonderful. And how can people find your books? Well, on my website as well. I know that Conversations with Chloe is on Amazon. and uh, Or they can contact me. I have lots of copies. I have books under the bed. You know how it is when you print up your books and you think you're going to sell a gazillion books. And you think everybody is going to go crazy for your book. And they're just going to be blown away by this amazing conversation. And you know what happens? Nobody believes you. That to me was the biggest shock. I would do book club readings and things and people were so skeptical and didn't believe that it was really true. So I would come home and I'd say, okay, Chloe, what do I do? You know what she said? She'd say, mom, don't worry. We will bring to you the people that need the book. You just go out there and do your thing and we will bring them to you. You have all the skills, you have, you know, you have all the history you have all the credibility, just go and believe. And so that's what I do now. So anybody who wants the book, you can, yes, you can get it on Amazon. You can email me and I'll send you a PDF for free and, uh, or I'll send you the, the copy. Wow. Uh, that's just, it's just been such a wonderful uh, interview with you and having you share your story and it's Thank such you. a remarkable journey. So Again, I just want to thank so thank you so much for taking the time and being a guest today. Thank you so much. Thank you. As we conclude this episode, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude for your presence within our community. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, leave a review, and share this podcast with friends and family. Subscribe to my newsletter in the show notes and receive new podcast episodes delivered right to your inbox. If you resonate with the interconnectedness of mind, body, and soul and are motivated to embark on a journey of personal healing, I invite you to connect with me at drlaudi.com. Together, we can pave a path towards transformative healing in your own life.